I just want to put out there that I did not have sex, sex, sexual relations to get my cancer. I just want to <laughs> not happen that way. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Hill, and I'm a breast cancer survivor of almost four years. A little bit about me. I'm a medical lab technician. I've been working at St. Luke's um, University Health Network in the laboratory for 16 years. Uh, married my high school sweetheart, Tom Hill, who's here with me today. He's a guidance counselor at a high school. Uh, we have three great kids. Uh, Casey's my son. He's 15. Abby is my 13-year-old going on 17. She wears my clothes now. Uh, Avery's my little peanut. He's 11. And um, they're, they're wonderful kids, and we have um, a very full schedule with five schedules, five people living in the house. Um, I want to tell you today about my experience with breast cancer and how part of the symphony panel of tests helped me avoid unnecessary chemotherapy. <laughs> Four years ago, we went camping with some friends. Um, there was 10 of us. It was a great time. Um, it was in July of 2008. Um, the only problem with that trip was I was covered in mosquito bites from head to toe. I refused to wear bug spray. I can't stand the smell. I can't stand the feel of it. So I was just going to cover up. But obviously they get in there and I was covered. So um, I had them all over my body and one day I was scratching you know, all around my neck and close to the top of my breast and I, I felt one that was kind of deep and I thought, oh, back burner. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just see how they clear up. Well, a month or so went by, and all of my mosquito bites had gone, except for the one on the top of my breast. It was just the size of, like, a frozen pea, and uh, a petite pea, and I thought, oh, it's probably nothing, but, um, you know, I have a gynecologist appointment coming up I have to get my pap test done. I'm going to ask her about it, and I even wrote myself a note, don't forget to ask about this little cyst on my breast, because I probably would forget. I didn't think anything of it. Well, my gynecologist said, yes, you do have a little cyst. It's probably nothing, but I'll send you to get your mammogram, and we'll see what happens. So I did make an appointment. I had a mammogram, oh, which I hated, <laughs> and then an ultrasound. And I thought, oh, what's going on? I'm having an ultrasound now. And um, the radiologist came out and said, you know what? You have a little benign cyst. Don't worry about it. We would like to see you in six months. So, you know, I made an appointment. Um, for six months, but meanwhile, in the lab, I had a coworker who had a cyst for five years. It was no more than maybe the size of a quarter, and every year she'd go for her pap, and every year they say the cyst hasn't changed. You're fine, and um, just before my six-month appointment, my coworker said um, she went to the doctor. She had a mammogram. She has stage four breast cancer. It was not a cyst, and it was not benign. So um, that scared me, it shocked me, and um, I knew I was going into my appointment at six months, February of 2009, demanding a biopsy, because I know better. I, I work in the laboratory, I see uh, thin preps come down, I see pap tests come down, I see all kinds of things come down, and I know that they have to look at cells to determine whether it's cancer or benign, so I was like, I'm not going to have it. Um, so I did go, and um, my cyst became enlarged. The radiologist did tell me, you know, we're going to do a biopsy today. And I was, like, ready to say, you are going to do a biopsy today. But he said, no, it did get a little bit bigger. You know, I'm not too concerned, but let's just do a biopsy. So I was all alone. I'm laying there thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, they're sticking a needle in me now. But I, um, and I did kind of have a feeling that uh, this might be something, but I, I, I wasn't going to worry about it. I had to wait a whole week to get my results, which... You know, it's not very fun to wait, um, trying to say, oh, it's nothing in your mind, and really it uh, could be possibly something. The nurse did call me, Regional Breast Cancer Breast Center, and she said, Lisa, I have some news for you. I really would like to talk to you in person. <laughs> I said, no, you're not. I'm not. You're going to tell me right now. I have breast cancer, don't I? And she said, how did you know? And I said, I just, because you wanted to see me in person, <laughs> that's why. So she said, you have breast cancer. I want you to get a surgeon. Here's a list of people in your area. I want you to get a surgeon as soon as possible. So that's what I did. Um, Tom and I have a full life. Everything is planned. Like I said, we have five kids, uh, jobs, schedules, sports, band, you name it. Um, my husband also coaches soccer. And just picture myself holding a big bucket of ping pong balls, and that 
bucket is my life and all the ping pong balls are in aspects of my life, well, somebody just kicked that bucket over and everything went flying and I couldn't catch those balls and they were bouncing all around and I just, I just couldn't do it. It was impossible. I couldn't breathe. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. And um, I'm a part-time employee and I don't get sick time. So what the heck am I going to do now? I was told that I had invasive duct ductal carcinoma, which spreads outside of the duct, and it had already spread into my tissues. Um, uh, I did find a surgeon, and right away they wanted to do a slew of tests, and with all each test you have to wait, and you have to wait, and you have to wait, and you don't get answers when you want them. Um, I was told, you know, you decide now whether you want a mastectomy, which is they're going to take their whole breast, or you want a lepectomy and just take out the lump. And I said to my doctor, I don't know what I want to do. How bad is it? I mean, what am I supposed to do? And he said, you decide. I think it's small enough, but you can risk it and do a lumpectomy, and then if, you, you know, if it spreads, we'll just go from there. So I said, let's do that. Let's save the breast. Um, um, I had genetics tests done because before my surgery, if I was going to have a positive gene for this breast cancer, I wanted everything out. I didn't want to have to deal with it again. I wanted to have surgery once, breast remove, you know, hysterectomy, the whole works. I was, but that test didn't even come back until like a day before my surgery was planned. So I was freaking out a little bit. Um, and I was told since I had invasive, invasive doc, ductal carcinoma at my age, which I was 38 at the time, I probably would have chemotherapy followed by radiation and some um, medication. So I waited and waited and waited for all my tests to come back. Um, I, wanted, I wanted surgery as soon as possible. It took a good month to plan it. Um, I wanted it out of my body as soon as possible. I did not want it to spread. My surgeon performed a sentinel lymph node biopsy which would tell you if you had um, cancer in your lymph nodes, which means it would have spread. So the sentinel lymph node is the first lymph node that um, probably drains the breast. When he took that lymph node out, they do a, an immediate biopsy of that to see whether you have cancer in that, bio, in that lymph node. If you have lymph node cancer, they're going to take out more lymph nodes. So uh, when my doctor woke me up, I made him tell me, you know, how many lymph nodes was it, because I just need to know right away. And he said, he brought me a bunch of daffodils. He said, guess what? It was only one lymph node. And I was like, yay, you know, I'm trying to wake up. And he's like, it was only one. So, um, and a week later, it confirmed the results, because they continually do biopsy that lymph node to make sure they didn't miss anything. So I was clear of that. Um, I have a few friends, uh, many friends now that I know, that have had chemo, um, because of breast cancer, since I'm in that kind of special circle now. Um, she, she suffered so much with her chemotherapy. Um, she had severe um, hives from lip, lips to feet. She was hospitalized twice. Um, one was cardiac arrest due to the hives that turned into anaphylactic shock, that she was allergic to something in her chemo cocktail. Headaches, very bad cramps, worst ever diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, no appetite. Exhaustion, flu-like symptoms, night sweats, even night soaks. She would have to change twice a night. Um, hot flashes, and um, you know she would have her chemo, have a couple of weeks break, and start over again. And all this would start over again. She lost her hair. She still, after a year, still gets hives from her chemotherapy, and she has very achy joints, no energy. I did not want to have chemo. I don't have time for chemo. I have a life to live. I have vacations to go on. I have friends to you know, see. I'm a very active and outgoing person, and I just, I just can't imagine my life stopping like that. So I had, um, I had a genomic test done on my tumor called a mammoprint test, which is part of the symphony panel of tests that provide information about your tumor biology and determines a woman's risk for recurrence. My medical oncologist asked me if he could do this test for me. It was just being tested at our hospital at the time. It wasn't something they routinely did. But I said, do everything. You do whatever you want. So he sent my tumor out, and um, the results came back. My um, medical oncologist called me at home, and he said, Lisa, good news. You're low risk um, for reoccurrence. Um, guess what? You don't have to have chemo. I'm sorry. I get so emotional. It was such good news to me because I could live my life normally. I could be a mom. I could work. And um, just because of this mammoprint print test, I'm so thankful for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I had eight weeks of exter external beam radiation. It's, it's a commitment. It was eight weeks every day, and it was a good ride for me. So um, 
And the only side effects I have was some burning and some hives and um, also a lot of fatigue at the end, but it wasn't toward the end that I really felt tired. I think it took about a year for me to get back to normal, my normal upbeat self that I am now. It's been, um, I'll be on tamoxifen for five years and it's almost been four years for me, so I'm almost done that drug. Um, that drug also comes with many side effects, which aren't fun, throws you right into menopause, gives you achy joints and uh, it may helps you gain weight quick. Gain 37 pounds <laughs> on this medication. Um, so I, I am an advocate of early detection and screenings. Um, many women who find a lump are afraid to find out what it is. They just kind of ignore it. Um, I just urge people, don't ignore it. You can catch it while it's early, and you can avoid all this. You can avoid all the, um, you know, the, the side effects that come with chemo and surgeries and being cut up and being poked and prodded. Um, the chances are, if you catch it at an early age, you can save your life, and that's why I'm here. I thank you for your time.